Good afternoon, everybody. I want to, uh, because of the wind and the weather, I guess we should get at it. But I want to, I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, I would uh, like us, please, uh, Darren, please join us, please. I would love to. Uh, before we get into it, we need to take a moment of silence. A year ago, yesterday, was the murder of George Floyd. Uh, so again, let's take a moment of silence and honor Mr. Floyd. Ellis, the chair. Thank you, Phyllis, for being here. Pastor Mark Oliver, who's the vice chair and also co-chair of the Policing Reform Subcommittee. Thank you for being here, Pastor. Pastor Rob Conley, who's the co-chair of the Policing Reform Subcommittee. Thank you, Pastor, for being here. Darren Duarte, who's the chair of the Housing Subcommittee. Thank you, Darren, for being here. Carlito Weaver, who is the co-chair of the Education Subcommittee. Thank you, Carlito, for being here. Yeah, thank you. I also want to thank uh, Police Chief uh, Emmanuel Gomes. Manny Gomes for being here. Thank you, Chief. Superintendent of Brockton Public Schools, Mike Thomas. Thank you, Mike, for being here as well. And then on behalf of the Solicitor's Office, Assistant City Solicitor Karen Fisher for being here as well. Thank you. I'm really just honored uh, today to, uh, to take a moment, first of all, to thank uh, the five members that are here, plus the three members that are not, uh, that actually took the responsibility of gathering ideas and recommendations on how I, as mayor, uh, can make the city of Brockton a more fair and equitable place across the board for everyone who decides to call the city of champions home. None of these members uh, were compensated, actually a great detriment to their own personal time. But they, they joined the cause. When I spoke to them individually, they said, whatever you need, you know, we're there for you. And uh, I am very, very thankful for that. Because quite honestly, when we stand here today, we need to figure out how we can take Brockton to the next level, how the City of Champions can be an example for the Commonwealth and the nation. Now, I want to just quickly say that the goal of the Community Justice Task Force was, quite honestly, to fulfill the pledge that I made as mayor uh, when I took the Obama Foundation's uh, oath, my Brothers Keeper Alliance. And uh, the pledge was to review police use of force policies, engage the community by including a diverse range of input, experiences, and stories, and report the review findings to the community as a whole. Community Justice Task Force uh, also didn't just look at policing. They looked at education. They looked at public health, housing, and economic development. Really, the, uh, the, the, the topics that have historically shown um, injustice. And we needed to do a deep dive here in the city of Brockton. And I'm proud to say, through the efforts of these fine people, plus the other three members, they did just that. They met bi-weekly from November 2020 until May of 2021. And they did it because they knew how important this cause was. And I want to just take a moment to thank each and every one of them. They all come from different diverse backgrounds, but they all call Brockton home. It's a special place. It's a place that I feel we can do better. And as mayor and in my administration, we will do better. But we can only do better together. I also want to take a moment to thank each and every citizen that participated. Um, when the task force decided to do their deep dive and analysis, they opened up surveys to the general public, and that ran uh, January 11th, 2021 through February 12th, 2021. I also want to thank a, uh, a special former member of my, uh, my office, Danielle Littman. Danielle ran point out of my office, and yeah, she, was great. she moved on to the State House, but Danielle really is uh, a great person, and she's still a city resident, and we thank her for her efforts. But um, I want to just tell you that while Community Justice Task Force was working together on this uh, in their subcommittees. Our, uh, our friends at the State House were also working on a police reform bill uh, that they were working on. But before we get into some of the uh, some of the findings and how.
how we're able to implement some of these recommendations quickly, and others are going to take a little bit of time. I want to just take a moment to honor uh, each and every one of them. And, um, you know, some people give me the business and say, wow, Sullivan, you give a lot of citations. But you know what, I do it because really I want to just thank people. You know, they don't need to do this, but they choose to do this. And I want to take a moment, if I could, to read these citations. First one is to the chair of the Community Justice Task Force, Ms. Phyllis Ellis. And uh, be it known that the mayor of the city of Brockton extends his appreciation to Phyllis Ellis in recognition of your distinguished service as chair of the Community Justice Task Force. I want to thank you for your dedication and commitment to improve social and economic justice within our city and with our community. And it really gives me great pleasure, Phyllis, to present this citation to you as a symbol of not just my appreciation, but the city's appreciation. It's duly by, signed by myself, Robert F. Sullivan, mayor of the city of Brockton, this 26th day of May, 2021. Phyllis, I'd love to give you this citation. The next recipient would be Pastor Mark Oliver. Uh, again, I want to thank Pastor Mark. Uh, Pastor Mark has become a really dear friend of mine since uh, I took office. Uh, we pray together every other Friday morning at 8.30. Uh, he leads that, uh, and he's just a, not just a religious uh, individual, but he's just a heck of a nice person. And when I called Pastor Mark to ask him, he said, uh, he never calls me Bob, he said, Mayor, I'm juggling a lot right now, but the fact that you called me, I'll make time. And that's what he does. He makes time, just like each and every one of these members. So, again, it gives me great appreciation to Pastor Mark Oliver in recognition of your distinguished service as Vice Chair, Community Justice Task Force. Again, I want to thank you, Pastor, for your dedication and commitment to improve social and economic justice within our city and our community, Pastor. Be it known that the Mayor Brockton extends his appreciation to Mr. Carlito Weaver in recognition of your distinguished service as a member of the Community Justice Task Force. And I thank you truly, Carlito, for your dedication and commitment to improve, again, social and economic justice within our city and our community. Carlito is not just uh, a great guy and a, a pillar in the community. He's a coach. He's a mentor, a uh, teacher at Brockton Public Schools. And so he is a success story. And I want to thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to continue to do to really form the next generation, Carlito. Thank you. I'd like to also thank you, uh, another uh, member of the cloth, Pastor Rob Conley, uh, who is uh, just, again, dedicated um, to the community uh, and to uh, his Christian values and beliefs. And he's become a friend of mine. I, I didn't know Pastor uh, prior to becoming mayor. And uh, he is uh, truly dedicated and a, a community activist, but also uh, just someone that is making a difference day in and day out. So again, being known that myself as mayor extends my appreciation to you, Pastor Rob, uh, in recognition of your distinguished service as a member of the Community Justice Task Force. I want to thank you personally for your dedication and your commitment to improve social and economic justice within our city of champions. I also want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Rob's wife for joining us today. Thank you so much for being here today. I now want to uh, give a citation to Darren Duarte and Darren's a uh, product of uh, Brockton, and uh, he, uh, he is the uh, police uh, communications expert, uh, press uh, and public uh, communications for Brockton Police. Uh, he has uh, served many roles here, uh, worked with uh, the late Mayor Bill Carpenter, uh, just a, a really community activist. Uh, and I want to thank you, Darren, for your friendship and your dedication. Be it known that the mayor extends his appreciation to Darren Duarte in recognition of distinguished service as a member of the Community Justice Task Force. I thank you for your dedication, your commitment to improve social and economic justice within our city, within our community, Darren.
And again, I will get the uh, the other three members. I'll get Nessie, I'll get uh, uh, Judge Mike Williams and uh, Attorney Michael Curry, their citations. I want to thank them. Uh, but I also just want to uh, say that when the Just Justice Task Force um, rendered their recommendations, uh, again, it was uh, multi-purpose. Um, police reform, of course, was, uh, was, was paramount, but education and equities, uh, public health, housing, and economic development. And I can tell you that we are taking each and every one of these recommendations seriously. I will tell you that Superintendent Mike Thomas, uh, Mike and I are both products of the Brockton Public Schools. Class 87 Mike is, I'm Class 88. Uh, we know that as a community, we need to be able to provide uh, certain teachings and attract certain employees to Brockton Public Schools that reflect the, uh, the student population. And Mike is committed to that, uh, to the extent that Mike just hired on the Brockton Public School side a diversity inclusion a personnel a director. Uh, we are also working diligently here on the city side. We're providing training, diversity inclusion, microaggression. Uh, it's not optional, it's mandatory on the city side, which includes Brockton Police and Fire, DPW, everybody that works for the city. These educational trainings are not just uh, done one-offs. It's a process. And I know that Mike, uh, if he wants to speak, he can, but I know that Mike uh, has made a pledge um, with our school committee, our seven members. Uh, this year is historic. We never had diversity inclusion subcommittee of the school committee. Uh, and we have three great members. Uh, we have Tony Rodriguez. We have Tom Minicello, which is chaired by the Ward 2 School Committee, Cynthia Rivas Mendez. Uh, and we are taking it serious and we're having deep conversations. And I'll be honest, listen, I'm a 51 year old white guy uh, that grew up here in the city of Champions. So uh, I have never had the discrimination, the bias, and the bigotry that many of my friends of color have had. I acknowledge that, I realize that, and Mike and I are forging a bond with all of our community to make sure that we strengthen Brockton Public Schools and provide uh, the opportunity uh, that is needed. We're a great public school system, recognized nationally, uh, and we are working together to do uh, better programming, and we will do that. Uh, I also want to just let you know that um, the discussions that were, uh, were offered in the round table that was provided and the survey uh, that came uh, forward uh, is something that we are literally working on, not just from the schools, not just with police, but also we're gonna be talking, and we have been talking with the Housing Authority, because we need to get input on the housing component as well. But the Law Department is working diligently right now to help us uh, facilitate and implement positive beneficial change. I am proud to tell you today that certain things are happening real time. We talked about the training, long overdue training, both on the city and school side. But right now, I can tell you that Chief Gomes and I are implementing a, a cadet program where our homegrown boys and girls here in Brockton are gonna be able to get the educational and also workforce by becoming employees in the cadet program. Uh, it, it's awesome, it's a game changer. It's a recommendation that was made uh, by Community Justice Task Force. We had looked at the city of Boston had done that. Uh, next week, we will be having our budget hearings, actually the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, and 10th. As mayor, I put forward $150,000 earmarked on the police uh, finance uh, budget line item strictly to fund the cadet program. We are also getting an additional $65,000 under CDVG grant for the B BRA, Brockton Redevelopment Authority. So between the 150 dollars and the 65000 we will have a cadet program historic here in the city of Brockton. And I just want to thank everybody. I want to thank the recommendation, and it really will help those that want to pursue a, a law enforcement uh, career. And again, we're taking care of our own here in the city of Brockton. So I want to thank everybody on that. Again, we are looking at, um, the law department is looking at strongly the police reform bill, the post committee that's coming down as well. I can tell you right now that certain things here locally are being done before that. And one thing is the use of force policy that was uh, enacted back in 2013 for Brockton PD. And I know that after the brutal murder of Mr. Floyd, both uh, Phyllis in her role as, as president of the NAACP Bishop Tony Branch and his role uh, as a member of the NAACP. They met here at City Hall with me and with Chief Gomes, and we went through the use of force policy. Uh, again, it is a policy that actually has, uh, stands above and beyond a lot of the other policies in the Commonwealth and the nation. But can we do better? Yeah, we can. 
and I'm making a pledge to you right now that we are working right now, Chief Gomes, myself, and Attorney Fisher, to modify and enhance that. And again, that will be promulgated. So that is a really a wonderful recommendation that was made by the task force. Some of the other recommendations that were made, and again, um, we want to make sure that we are able to have a diverse, uh, again, I'm talking about police right now, a diverse um, uh, uh, employment here, both on the officers and supervisors. We have a very great, um, uh, I, I call it a feeder system, and I call it the Brockton High School, Brockton Public School system. If you go and you talk to police officers currently on the force right now, you'll say, what building are we are Brockton High? What class are we are Brockton High? And that's just a fact. So what we are doing right now as a city is we want to make sure that we can create that and create that theater system. Cadet program is one thing. That's going to be for the younger generation. But right now, of course, we, uh, we follow the Castro decision. We're a uh, gateway community. We follow the Castro. We also have preference to our city employees under civil service. So we are looking at every option to enhance and attract Brockton residents to not just police, but fire and to city as well, and school, and Mike does that as well. So again, we need to be able to have deep dive conversations about taking care of Brockton uh, residents and Brockton graduates, and how we can do that is continue to brainstorm and work together, and we are doing that, and we will continue to do that as long as I'm mayor of the city of Brockton, and that's a pledge that I make. I want to also let you know that there's certain other recommendations that were made, uh, such as, um, banning military grade uh, weaponry. Uh, we do not use that and we will not use that and Chief Gomes has made that pledge. We will not use that in the city of Brockton. Uh, and when I'm not mayor anymore, the next mayor is, is going to have to adhere to that standard as well. So again, that is something that was a recommendation. I want to thank uh, all the task force relative to that, but it has been implemented and it will continue to be implemented as well. One thing that I do want to say is I want to thank the state delegation. Again, Brockton is fortunate to have uh, three state reps and uh, one state senator. And again, what we are looking at right now relative to the police reform bill that is going to be uh, working to benefit not just the city of Brockton, but it will be uh, helping the Commonwealth as a whole. Uh, in terms of um, looking at certain things such as banning chokeholds, banning tear gas, uh, all those endeavors, anything that the post committee comes down, we were going to honor that and we will honor that. Uh, so again, I just want to let you know that um, as a lifelong Brocktonian, I'm just thankful for the dedication and the commitment to all these volunteers. I want to thank them because many of them are wearing different, different hats. As I said, Phyllis is not just chair of the community justice. She's president of NAACP. She was also honored this week as uh, one of our outstanding citizens. So congratulations, Phyllis. Um, but why I asked Chief Gomes and Superintendent Thomas to be here and Attorney Fisher is because at the end of the day, our goal needs to make sure that it's lawful, right, so we have to dot the I's and cross the T's from the legal component, that it meets the standards uh, that Brockton Public Schools has set and the bar is so, so high, and also relative to Brockton police and fire as well. So again, I just want to thank everybody for being here. We will continue our efforts, but we will only continue those together. As I said to all of these members plus the other three, their job is not done. They probably don't want me to say that, but as mayor, I'm going to continue to lean on them for their support, their guidance, and for Pastor Mark and Pastor uh, Rob for their prayers as well. So let's continue to work for the best interests of the city of Brockton. God bless you all. Continue to be safe. COVID is still here, and we have lost 434 residents to the deadly virus. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and let's continue to forge ahead together. Thank you. <laughs>